So, in the last session we looked at uh, diversification, we looked at um, the balanced scorecard. So, with respect to diversification we looked at related diversification, unrelated diversification, all those types of things. We looked at several examples from the Indian context. So, now we come to one important area with respect to strategic management that is mergers and acquisitions. This mergers and acquisitions I have discussed in my book or in chapter number 9. So, in the Indian context that is page number 158, this mergers and acquisitions is not something new if you really look at it in the Indian context. It started in the 80s only, there was a big fight between the, this company DCM and Escorts. So, they were locked in a takeover tangle in the early 80s. So, compared at that point of time there was a lot of hue and cry why this takeover is taking place, could they not operate as distinct units, why should one take over the other all those types. So, this was uh, this is something which was not heard of or which was not very common at that point of time in the early 80s. Now, come back to shift back to fast forward to, to 2022, it is a common place. Okay. This mergers and acquisitions keep on happening continuously, whether you are an IT firm or a manufacturing firm does not really matter. So, so many acquisitions have been done by IT companies, whether it is Wipro or Infosys, they have acquired so many foreign companies as well. So, as I mentioned in the previous classes, it is your reserves position which helps you to take these types of decisions. So, this in the present day setup what is happening? Mergers and acquisitions are considered a strategic option for the company. So, you are to consider mergers and acquisitions as an available strategic option if you have the wherewithal that is your financial resources are such that you can have a leeway with this option. That is what many of the successful IT companies in India are doing now. So, not only are they trying to look at mergers and acquisitions commonly known as M and A within India, but they are looking at it actively outside the country as well. So, you find many IT companies taking over many of the companies operating in the United States and Europe. So, this was something unthinkable a few decades back, but now a reality these companies are taken over by Indian companies and they are operating these units which are functioning from abroad. Okay. So, this is the present day scenario and merger refers to when two or more com I am reading from the book, when two or more companies roughly of the same size or strength formally submerge their corporate identities into a single one in a friendly atmosphere. So, in merger you really do not have a fight. A holding company may be formed and its shares are exchanged for shares held by the shareholders of the merging companies. This is what happened 
when this company consolidated coffee which was operating in Coorg which at that point of time merged with Tata's okay. So, Tata's wanted to enter this coffee business. They were looking for a suitable candidate which can be acquired. Then this option of consolidated coffee which was doing very well in Kurk came up. Tata's offered a very good handsome price for the shares of consolidated coffee to the existing shareholders. The result was that the existing shareholders transferred their shares to Tata's and this consolidated coffee became an outfit from Tata's. So, a friendly atmosphere this merger took place and what you will see as Tata coffee is actually coming from this consolidated coffee earlier consolidated coffee from Coorg and Coorg is a well known coffee growing belt in the country known for its tasty coffee along with the Chikmangalur and all that places those places. So, the what happened when do you get into acquisition when a company offers cash or securities in exchange for the exchange for the majority shares of another company happens when merger is not agreed upon when the battle is severe target price may be 100 percent above market price. This is what is happening right now with respect to this Twitter this Elon Musk offering a huge price for its shares. So, he wants to take over Twitter still not at taken over. He is willing to pump in 44 billion dollars at least the information in the press and the media that was coming was he was willing to pump in 44 billion dollars. Now, it has run. the latest information is he is having a double uh, rethink on the whole this thing. Okay. So, whether to go through the whole deal or to withdraw from the deal is also that option is also available to him in the American setup. So, he can do it within 6 months according to the existing rules that is what the media puts out. Okay. He is having a rethink on this 44 billion dollars. So, because many of the existing Twitter shareholders we are not very happy, but when the price the offered was really lucrative they said ok we go with the whole this thing. Now, Musk himself having having this rethink option ok should I go through this deal or not ok. Mergers the motivations for merger can be this is what is given here improving economies of scale gaining managerial expertise, market supremacy, acquiring a new product or a brand name and diversifying the portfolio, reducing risk and borrowing costs, taxation or investment incentives. So, any of these could be reasons for this uh, merger or uh, acquisition. So, improving your economies of scale gaining foothold in the new business like what Tata's did with respect to their coffee. So, so many of these things keep on happening on a very regular basis in the present day liberalized Indian market. So, you do not really have to look at the US market. Oh, what is happening in the 
it is happening in the Indian market also. So, some things happening in the leading stock markets will have an impact on the Indian stock market also. So, whether it is the NYSC or the NASDAQ indices, it will affect the BSC. and the NSE. So, whether it is a Fed, Fed policy of the United States or the RBI policy of India both do affect both the BSE and the NSE. So, some this is reflected in the way the indices move in the marketplace at present due to the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine not seeing the end. So, this is what is this is what is called uncontrollables. So, Russia thought that Ukraine will surrender within a week, but what is happening in the present day setup more than 4 months over Ukraine not surrendering but it looks like Russia is uh, losing ground on so many fronts with in front of a small country Ukraine, Ukraine is almost destroyed. So, bringing back Ukraine to the old this thing to the pre war level is quite a Herculean job. Now, with so many supports propping up whether it is from the United States or from the European Union countries, Ukraine is still holding its head. May not be high, but still keeping the war going that has impacted the world in so many ways. The oil prices have shot up many times through the roof. Similarly, many of these cooking oils or edible oils their price has also shot up. So, what was a 100 rupee oil due to this lack of imports from Ukraine it has shot up to double the price what was 100 this went up to nearly 200. So, this affected the Indian market too and is still affecting the Indian market. This can always happen when you are in situations which are not under your control. So, market is not able to control these types of war like situations. So, this is the now if you look at it the next question that comes is how do you screen a candidate for this merger or acquisition? What is the type of screening that you adopt? The screening that you adopt is identify the industries whether it is a medium scale investment or a large scale investment. Select the sectors based on data with respect to sales, turnover, return on investment, market shares, competition, asset turnover, etcetera. Then choose the companies by sales turnover and asset level, determine acquisition cost cost of acquisition and returns compare candidates ranking concept of fit identifying the good ones can be through high market share growing market good management system diversified portfolio return on investment above benchmark level. So, in other words what is the type of uh, indicators that you can get you can suppose you are having the financial wherewithal 
using this screening process you can get eligible candidates for this acquisition or merger. So, then you can look at the suitability of a proposal. So, you can assemble the suitability of a proposal. There are many M and A companies which are which were well known in the US now operating in India also. So, this Morgan a well known M and A company operating in India also. So, they they do the job of what are all mentioned here the screening. Sometimes these companies also source funds help you source funds through different agencies can be international agencies also for which they charge it is a success charge. Suppose, this whole proposal goes through and you get a loan at a reasonably good interest rate for the company that is not very high then they charge a success fee for this ok. Suppose, you are able to get it from world lending agencies then the interest rates will be very reasonable sometimes less than 4 percent then they charge this success fee of 1 percent or 2 percent of the project cost and all this. So, the assessing of the suitability of a proposal is dependent on the funds availability, the likely positive synergies, the negative synergies and the weaknesses and whether the timing is appropriate. Is required style of management available? So, these are some, this is one important aspect which you have to look at. You cannot just take over any company which is operating in the market just because it is in your field of interest. You must find out whether the culture of this company meshes with the meshes with the existing culture of the parent company. This is uh, this was a very sharp indicator for Tata's when they took over this consolidated copy. This is the cultures whether they match and they found that yes no problem the cultures match. So, then they said they gave the nod the top management gave the nod for this whole uh, consolidated coffee being taken over from by Tata's. In order to do this mergers and acquisitions some valuations have to be done. What are the types of valuations that you do? One is called the PE ratio that is the market price per share divided by the net earnings after tax per share gives you the P E ratio. Then the P E ratio and the E P S that is the market price per share divided by the P E ratio should be compared with balance sheet and profit and loss account. So, you compare the P ratios and the earnings per share with the balance sheet and the profit and loss accounts. The acquirer should divest loss making operations. So, this is one thing which the acquirer should do. Use ratio analysis to compare industry average and current ratio you should use to reduce current liabilities. The stock level to reduced stock levels 
So, can be stocks over cost of goods sold multiplied by 12 months. The average age of debtors reduce the average age of debtors, debtors this ratio coming as debtors divided by sales into 365. Using all this revise the balanced balance sheets and the profit and loss account. Now, incorporate the growth and expectation rates from your organization, calculate the replacement value of assets. This replacement value of assets is given by this formula 1 minus the age of assets divided by the total economic life of the asset into the current cost of the asset. So, gives you the replacement value of assets. We will tell you when you want to acquire a firm, how much can you pay for these uh, assets. So, this is the job of the M and A companies, they have to give the acquirer a holistic picture what can happen when this type of acquisition takes place. Then the next aspect that comes in is managing after merger. How do you manage this company after merger? So, if you look at the Indian scene, this NRI status is uh, helping in mergers to get out of this FERA Foreign Exchange Regulation Act likely to become dominant in future. This is going to become dominant in future. So, sometimes uh, what do you call some uh, misuse also took place of this uh, NRI status with respect to these mergers and acquisitions. So, some people got into what do you call trouble that is the NRIs got into trouble also, because they used their uh, NRI status to get into these mergers and acquisitions by flouting so many of the fera norms. But all said and done, an NRI status can help in mergers. So, many times it can help you to get over the fera norms and it is likely to stay as one of the options or the routes for this merger in the Indian context. So, this is the type of scenario which you are having with respect to M and A in the country. So, this is uh, this is given on page number 160 of the book and this book also gives you some idea of what is re-engineering on page number 161. So, this uh, 161 this re-engineering popularized by Michael Hammer, he suggested 7 principles that is organizing around outcomes not specific tasks. Have those who use the output of the process perform it perform design a persons or a departments job around an objective or outcome instead of a uh, or de design uh, this is organizing around outcomes design the persons or a departments job around an objective or outcome instead of a single task or a series of tasks. When you have those who are use the output of the process perform it make use of the computer based information systems processes for re-engineering, subsume information processing into real work that produces the information. Then the fourth one is to treat geographically dispersed resources as though they are centralized 
link parallel the fifth one being link parallel activities instead of integrating the results. The sixth one being fix the decision point where the work is performed and build control into the process. The last one being capture information once and at the source. So, use primary data, use the primary this thing to get into database. So, this is uh, this, this re engineering used by many Indian companies also. It is not that the Indian companies did not make use of it, they did make use of this re engineering. So, they made use of this re engineering to maybe downsize or thin the line, maybe the production line or whichever lines required to be pruned. So, instead of calling it downsizing, many used to call it right sizing. Okay. So, this is the right sizing for the organ. Suppose, you required some labor to be retrenched. So, you found that 10 people were working and 5 are enough to do that work. So, you are downsizing this 10 workforce to 5. So, the acquirer used to say that he is right sizing the organization, still continues to say he does not use the term downsizing even to this day. He says, I am right sizing the organization. So, that can happen. So, these are some of the things which uh, are crucial in the strategic management process. The present day scenario looks at mergers and acquisitions as a possible strategic option and a continuing tool. So, it is not that you look at mergers and acquisitions once in a way. No, it is happening on a continual basis in the Indian market. Okay. Now, given this type of scenario, you look at so many options with respect to strategy. So, you exercised your option in one particular way that is a company by saying you I mean the company. Then, the met then what comes to the companies? Okay, we did all this. Now, how do we evaluate what all we did and how do we control these actions? So, this leads you to one of the things that is evaluation and control. This evaluation and control is one more important aspect with respect to strategy. There you may have to look at the job design in the new setup. So, we will consider these aspects in the next session. So, thank you, we will stop here. Okay.